People have gotten used to luxury. COVID-19 birthed and took convenience to another level. With food deliveries accessible by app, meal subscriptions, and curbside pickup, it's easy to forget that people in the world are literally starving. The other day, I was sitting on my couch doing research while eating a vegan Power Bowl when I realized that this would actually bring some people so much joy. To have a comfortable place to sit, a laptop, and this meal, even if it did come from Taco Bell. And this is an everyday thing for Americans. Meanwhile, in Somalia, people are living without electricity and suffer from two or three forms of malnutrition. What if I told you that we have enough food to feed 10 billion people? It's true. In the past 20 years or so, global food production has actually increased and it produces 1.5 times more food than it did before. The good news and bad is that our population consists of 8 million people, enough to feed everyone and more. But the bad news is that world hunger is still alive and ongoing. With food pills, nutrition injections, and even engineered crops, People have tried to come up with solutions but have came up short. Now, if you've been curious about humanitarian issues and have little knowledge about world hunger, then this is the video for you. Let's get started. According to the World Food Program, the whole continent of Latin America is on the move, meaning that migration is at an all-time high. From late 2021 to June 2022, Latin American countries that were food insecure increased by 1.4 million. Although food production has increased, 25,000 men and women still die every single day from starvation. 45% of deaths in children under five were nutrition related, and it's women and children that suffer the most. Now, the children that survive are unfortunately left with long-term consequences, and this involves delayed development, risk of chronic disease, and behavioral problems. What's to blame is devastations with hurricanes, droughts, and earthquakes, as if that wasn't bad enough. The war on Ukraine and COVID-19 heightened world hunger to disastrous levels. Ukraine was the world's third and fifth biggest seller of corn and wheat before the war. Russia was the largest exporter of wheat and fertilizers according to the Observatory of Economic Complexity. The war has depressed the production and exports of these products, and millions of tons of Ukraine grain were blocked by black seaports. This included food from the World Food Program, which was desperately needed by African communities and vulnerable communities elsewhere. Additionally, the World Food Program reports mothers returning home empty-handed from dwindling food markets where prices have doubled due to COVID-19 and the war. And as of March 2022, 345 million people have been pushed to the point of not being able to sustain their livelihoods because of very little calories. And 50 million people are on the edge of famine. Furthermore, deforestation and animal agriculture play a huge role. When trees are ripped out, it's a big job to get the soil working in the way that it used to and taking away our ability to grow more crops there. Now, with animal agriculture, you're probably wondering how in the world does raising and feeding cattle affect people who are hungry? If anything, they provide meat for people to eat. Well, that's just the thing. From a global perspective, in order to sell the meatiest pound of chicken or beef a farmer can get, they fatten them up the most efficient way they can, getting more bang for their buck. To do so, however, animals are getting food fed to them that could have been fed to us. Now, when they're being fed corn, grains, or milk substitutes, that really could have all gone people who really need it the most. Now, the majority of grains that are produced commercially go to biofuels and animal agriculture. In a way, biofuels and livestock have been given priority. Meat consumption around the world is so high that it's easy to see why. But before we keep going, hi, my name is Kim, and welcome to The Green Lab Coat. If you enjoy living a healthy lifestyle backed by science, make sure to subscribe for more videos. Also, don't forget to hit the like button to help the algorithm and the bell for complicated subjects made easy. Let's get started. Now, whether we agree with it or not, we have to question what is driving so many families to risk their lives on dangerous journeys through the jungle, across rivers, or on the open sea? This is not a political video by any means, but we want to point out just how big world hunger is right now. According to World Vision, three years ago, the majority of migrants came from the Northern Triangle countries, and that's Honduras, Guatemala, and El Salvador. Now, most migrants come from other countries like Venezuela, Colombia, Nicaragua, and Cuba. Now, what is it that's tying all these countries together? Cuba is suffering extraordinary food shortages and price hikes. About three quarters of Venezuelans 
live on less than $1.90 a day, which, according to economists, is not enough to even feed one person. In parts of Nicaragua, one in four children under the age of five have chronic malnutrition. Now, it's these things that are hitting these countries harder, and in turn, they're migrating, making it affect other countries. Also, nothing says desperation more than a person's willingness to cross the Darien Gap. This is a particularly arduous and dangerous forest route in Central America that allows access from the south to the north part of the continent. Now, to paint a clear picture, 5,000 people passed away in 2020. Then, in 2021, that number increased to 151,000 people. In what is supposed to be a 10-day venture, is shortened for many people as it's reportedly one of the most dangerous jungles in the entire world. After all, people don't leave happy homes. A lot of people don't even leave unhappy homes. They leave when they feel they have no other options left or out of desperation. According to UN data, 69 countries total are experiencing food, energy, and financial shocks as of June 2022. And if we don't, Brianna, do this, let me tell you what's going to happen. It's not that just people will die. You're also talking about destabilization of nations and mass migration, which is a hundred times more expensive. Just recently, the United States was spending $60 million a week. That same child back in Guatemala, we can do it for one to $2 a week. People don't want to leave home, but if they don't have food, they could do what any of us would do as moms and dads, and they're going to find it. The most definitive way to grasp an understanding on world hunger is to pay attention to where the money's going. The United States spends around $25 billion a year on customs, border protection, immigration, and customs enforcement. Now, given the rise in people coming to the U.S., it makes total sense that people want to protect themselves. But in comparison, $3 billion is the average the U.S. donates on a yearly basis to the World Food Program. While this is in fact very generous, making the U.S. the top donor with European countries following closely behind, if we help stabilize our food supply even more, the influx of them coming over here wouldn't be so great. Other countries, however, would have to do the same. Now, the year that the war on Ukraine happened, a whopping $7.2 billion were donated that year to the World Food Program by the U.S. But even with all this given, it seems it still may not be enough. Now, let's break some things down to put into perspective just how much money is actually needed to end world hunger. David Beasley, the former executive director of World Food Program, tweeted to Elon Musk in 2021, quote, Congratulations to Elon Musk for passing up Jeff Bezos as the world's richest person, worth a whopping $221 billion. To celebrate, I'm offering you a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Help us save 42 million lives from starvation for just $6.6 .6 billion. Offer expires soon and lives do too. Elon actually replied by saying, quote, If the WFP can describe on this Twitter thread exactly how $6 billion will solve world hunger, I will sell Tesla stock right now and do it. But it must be open source accounting so the public sees exactly how the money is being spent. Unquote. Unfortunately, when the plan was shown, the plan would have only covered one year. And on top of that, Elon seemed to misinterpret that 42 million people wasn't covering world hunger as a whole, but just buying time for people who are on the brink of famine by providing one meal per day. Now, organizations like the World Food Program are highly ranked, but the majority of food aid isn't free and actually hurts the prosperity of the country. The reality is that aid is really a loan required to be paid back at a low interest rate. If you're thinking, why can't we actually just give the food so as to not put the country more in debt? If only it were that simple. Because the food is being provided by farmers from established countries like the US and the EU, the government pays a surplus to these farmers for giving out the food. But the government they needs to find a way to get the money back. Now, there's different forms of food aid, but a lot of times they end up being sold at supermarkets in those countries for a lower price, creating a competition with local farmers who rely on that income to feed their families and have to sell their own crops at a higher price. Now, another thing to be said is that third world countries have a reputation for being corrupt, making first world countries hesitant to help with anything. And even then, we still do. What good is it to throw money if the people in power aren't honest and that A doesn't get equally spread to all people? A little over a year ago, a new executive group has taken over, elected with the objective of fighting corruption. The new president is determined to recuperate these billions of dollars smuggled by Kola Aluko and his partners. 
There are dozens of accounts in four Swiss credit institutes for over 67 million francs, 58 luxury cars, three private planes, and a land area of over 2,000 square meters at Montanola in Ticino. The need to lend one pockets is priority over helping those in need. Even investors from first world countries, many of them know where the money is going and who it's hurting, but they choose to do it anyway. Feeding the world can in fact be a simple job if everyone agreed to do so, but sadly, the governments that want to end it are the ones who don't have the problem, and the ones with the problem have a population of people fighting to stay alive, making it nearly impossible to fight back. Let's talk about other ways they are affected. Agriculture in Bolivia uses so much land for agriculture, but not everyone is getting fed. Now, farmers receive subsidies only for cocoa, coffee, and cotton to be exported. Now, other than feeding their families and friends, these farmers don't really have much of an incentive to grow a diversified yield. This in turn hurts the local people who don't have a variety of things to eat. And when talking seeds, fertilizers, and livestock, farmers get zero help for this as well. Also, the country of Ethiopia owns 50 million cattle. One would think that everyone is getting fed, but because the livestock are unnecessarily consuming their food, land, and water, more than two-thirds of Ethiopia's topsoil has been lost due to raising cattle. Then there is Canada, the banana-loving country. Bananas don't grow there, so exports come from the tropical region of Latin America. Again, leaving the country with little bananas, but that's just how they make their money. The Series 2030 Foundation, led by Bill and Melinda Gates, says that tackling world hunger is possible, but we would need $330 billion by 2030. Mind you, this was a 10-year plan that was on track before COVID and the Ukraine hit. By implementing magic seeds, aka engineered crops that are drought resistant, need less water, and grow double the yield, a third world countries will be able to grow about the same number of food that first world countries can grow. Now, this picture right here is a recycled maize seed corn compared to a climate resistant maize seed crop in Kenya. And this picture right here is a woman's RNA farm. Now, with RNA resistant crops, GMO is going to be replaced. And this is for the fact that GMO is destroying the soil. With RNA, however, the seeds are engineered to tackle a certain type of genetic composition. Now, some people argue that he's trying to help humanity and save the world. Others argue that genetically engineered crops can be altered to destroy humanity. Now, the truth is that time will tell how this strategy plays out. But after doing much ample research and digging, it's not likely. And given that we're running out of options, this might actually be a great idea. Coupled with that is to educate them on efficiency in the farming world, which branches into traditions at home that have actually been harmful. Part of the reason so many are starving is that they're having more kids and families can afford to raise. The idea in a lot of these third world countries is that only a few of their babies will live. So by having as many kids as possible, their security system or people to help out is actually bigger. It's just not working. Providing aid to a country means doing it in a way where they can lift themselves up and eventually out of poverty. And access to healthcare would be a big help. Then, investing in smallholder farms and subsidizing them so that they have access to basic ingredients that they can diversify their crops, we can help feed the world. These are solutions that you and I have little control over. However, there's other things that we can do. Number one, and a little bit of an unpopular opinion, is cut out meat or lessen it. It's been known to many, but a lot more still need to find out that animal agriculture takes a huge amount of food from humans. Now, this is not even taking into consideration the effects that it has on climate change and the torturous lives that they live. Two, be a conscious consumer. We need to try to live more with just the foods that we need, given that so much goes to waste. Three, promoting gender equality. Now, this is already a big thing in first world countries, but Promoting gender equality in third world countries isn't really heard of. Many farmers in the poorest countries are actually women, yet when laws are passed, they are left out of the debate, having no say in what resources they can get or if they'll even get any help for that matter. Now, if a woman is malnourished, it affects the child that she breeds. Four, promote vertical farming so we use less space. I have a whole video on this and you can watch this right here. Five, wear clothing that support your cause. Not only do these proceeds go to helping fight world hunger, but you're promoting it to the world by wearing it on a daily basis. Six, those of you that invest, download the Troop app. It helps you see what stocks contribute to the causes that you care about and which ones are hurting them. All in all, everyone is in charge of food 
It takes a concerted effort from everyone on the planet. Comment down below and tell me what you think. In the end, the choice is yours.